In its updated National Seismic Hazard Map, the U.S. Geological Society reveals new offshore faults near San Diego, which increases and extends earthquake risk in our area by about 20 percent. Here with further details is geologist Pat Abbott. Pat, welcome back. Good to be here. Now, I said new, but I really should say newly discovered offshore faults because clearly they've been there. Describe for us well, where they are. Well, basically, uh, the first approximation, you look out offshore and every time you see a b bunch of islands, the Coronado Island, San Clemente Island, Catalina Island, why are those islands there? They're squeezed up, lifted up along those active faults. So we've known they've been there all along. The problem is how fast are they moving and what has their record been? And we have more information on that now. Now, are these, these faults, uh, they're parallel, as you were saying, kind of out, moving out. Are they connected? And if, if one was to rupture or move, would it impact the others? Uh, well, interestingly enough, that's part of what this new study has done here. Now, what the USGS has done with this thing where they've taken, tried to reduce things to the bits of information, then let the supercomputer go through thousands of iterations on it. And, and part of what that does is it shows is that commonly you don't just have one fault move. It's a really big earthquake. Some of the nearby faults move as well. So that's significant. Now, for us on land here, we've been able to dig trenches and measure offsets, do radiocarbon dating of twigs and things to try to get an idea of magnitude and when earthquakes occurred. Haven't been able to do that offshore. GPS data are now being fed into that, and that's what's giving us more of a quantification feel for what's happening offshore. So what are those faults? When you look at the map and you see, you know, the here's the San Andreas Fault, San yes, Jacinto. That's my next it's just, right. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to know how they compare to these faults that we already, here in San Diego specifically, Rose Canyon, like Elsinore, how, how do these, these offshore faults, do we know enough about them to compare them to what we had? Yes, we do. We don't know as much, but better all the time. You might almost visualize from, from the San Andreas Fault in the desert to the offshore, it's all like taking a deck of cards and sharing it. So in other words, they're all more or less sub-parallel to each other. Basically, the edge of the Pacific Plate, westernmost California, is literally being sheared past the rest of North America. Now, for those offshore faults, they are uh, not as big as the San Andreas, but they're as big as the Elsinore Fault, which gave us our Easter earthquake four years ago there in Baja California. They're as big as the Rose Canyon Fault. So when we look offshore at Coronado Banks, Santa Cruz Island, those, those uh, faults, they could easily do earthquakes of magnitude 7. And uh, you're right ahead of me here. Do, do these faults on the offshore, do they, do they actually increase the intensity of earthquake probability? Let's say uh, instead of having a bunch of little 4.0s, we might have a, a 7 here in the San Diego area? Yes, we've always thought as much, but, but what we're doing now with this great new uh, work done by the U.S. Geological Survey, what they've done is they've tried to reduce things down to uh, millimeters of slip per year. In other words, for all these faults, they took the faults of California and broke them like into about 2,700 rectangles and then put millimeters of slip data in each one to try to uh, have the computer assess earthquake risk. And so for the offshore faults, now that's GPS data put in there, so we actually have slip rates put in those faults and now have a better feel of their size and their potency. And they are significant. They are things to be taken seriously. What about the risk of tsunami? I've always heard we have a shelf off, off the uh, coast here in San Diego, a pretty deep, sh steep shelf. Does that protect us from a tsunami if one of these offshore uh, uh, faults were to rupture? Well, good, good question. It, when we talk about those offshore islands, they actually are like high edges on ridges. You get whole ridges lifted up, ridge and troughs. And those undersea topography of those huge ridges and troughs do a great job of uh, taking a lot of the energy out of the big tsunami that come from Alaska or Japan or Chile. And we have data on those. We've seen what they do to us. Not that much. However, those faults offshore themselves. The, the stunning one here was in 1998 in Papua New Guinea where a magnitude 7 earthquake offshore and a setting just like what we have, the earthquake didn't do a tsunami but it set off a submarine sand slide and that sand slide pushing towards the shore ran a tsunami up that killed over 2,000 people. That same thing could happen here. You could have that it's kind possible, of a tsunami. But probable. Uh, probable, probable, high probability but very rare frequency. I see, I see. Um, which, which I, I guess I'm trying to figure out if the San Andreas Fault is still our biggest uh, threat as far as causing the most damage here in San Diego. 
uh, certainly the San Andreas Fault is the one that can give us the biggest magnitude earthquake. For us, luckily, we're on the order of 80 miles away from it, so a lot of that high frequency energy will have uh, lost a lot of its impact by the time it gets to San Diego. You kind of think maybe back to uh, four years ago to our Easter earthquake where we had like that 45 seconds of rocking and rolling. Well, take that and say extend the length double and maybe the up and down double and get maybe more of a feel of what that San Andreas Fault earthquake would do to us, particularly shaking tall structures like bridges and buildings. Okay, let me let me end on this one. We don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, so the USGS updates their hazard map about every uh, six years, I understand. Why is that important? How are these maps used? Uh, building codes is the most significant thing. As we gather more and more information about earthquake frequency and what magnitudes uh, earthquakes are liable to occur, then those need to go into the building codes so that we construct things in ways to protect people. All right, geologist Pat Abbott, thank you so much. Good to be here.